Thank you, and it's a pleasure for me to be with you here today and share my uh, passion for the race car. And today I want to talk to you about the Formula SAE race car competition. We'll go over a little bit about the competition, the technology in the car, and then what it means for engineering education. Now, the, um, there are several uh, student competitions uh, going on all the time, and the Formula SAE is the premier student design competition in the world. It started in 1981 here in Texas at Austin, and now we have two events in the United States. We have events in England, Australia, and Japan, and many, many other places in the uh, world, and it's growing. New, new venues are coming on all the time. Now, this uh, event is hosted by the Society of Automotive Engineers, and yes, SAE is what's printed on your oil can. And the concept of the competition is the team is going to offer a prototype car to a hypothetical company that wants to put it in production. And they have several ways to evaluate and have criteria for what's the best car for them to put in production, and that's the concept of the competition. And each event is judged by professionals at high levels from all over the world, automotive engineers, race car engineers, and they come and judge this vehicle both on static presentations and discussions as well as dynamic or driving events. In the first day, uh, they do the technical inspection on the car to be sure it uh, complies with all the rules of the uh, competition. They want to be sure that it won't tilt over in a high G turn. They want to be sure the muffler's working and the brakes are working. And then in parallel with that, they have a design presentation where some of the best uh, race car engineers in the world quiz the guys about what their knowledge is about the design of their car. There's also a cost analysis. The more money you spend on your car, the less points you make. And there's also an oral presentation of marketing, how you see the car being marketed. Uh, then he, day two starts the dynamic events. And one of the events is a skid pad, where the car drives in a circle as fast as it can to measure the lateral Gs. Then there's an acceleration event to see how much power and weight that you have, uh, sort of like a drag race for 82 yards. Now the defining event for this competition is called autocross. It's a solo event, so there's only one car on the track and is racing against the clock. And the organizers put up uh, traffic cones in some sort of form of a road uh, track that has slalom, chicanes, hairpins, straightaways, and you get to walk it for a little while, and then you only get to drive it twice. And so this is an interesting form of competition because there's no practice, and you'll never see that track again. It's all how well can you interpret before you drive it how quickly you can go around that track. So it's a very interesting form of racing. Now day three comes up with an endurance race. It turns out that these cars are only driven for about 30 seconds to 60 seconds every time they run, and uh, we run a course that's an auto style, autocross style course that lasts about 13 miles. That represents an entire season of racing for one of these cars, and they want to check the endurance. Only about half the cars last that 13 miles of endurance. They also have a driver change, and so that we have two different drivers uh, running the same track, and then you're scored on time, how fast you can cover that 13 miles. They also measure the fuel that you use. So everything's going to be a compromise. If you have a big engine, you'll go really fast. You'll burn a lot of fuel. You'll lose points because of the fuel. So it's uh, interesting how each team plays that compromise. Some cars are very, very simple, very light. Some are very sophisticated. And how you play the compromise determines how many points you get. And all events are uh, scored, and you get points for each event. And, of course, the team with the highest cumulative points wins the overall event. UTA has won this event eight times in the United States. We've won the event in England, Australia, and Japan. And UTA hosts an event here on campus in July that... Uh, we invite teams from all over the country and Canada 
uh, to join us for a weekend of racing. Last year we had 12 uh, universities representing us. We normally win all three tracks of that event, and we normally win the Sports Car Club of America's uh, national event uh, in the fall. Right now we're ranked number one in the United States, and we're ranked number five in the world. Now let's talk a little bit about the technology in the car. And of course here is uh, our car from last year. And one thing I want to talk about is to make a race car go fast, you really need to save weight. And so we use a lot of high-tech materials to save weight. Carbon fiber is very strong, very stiff, and very lightweight. It's amazing how light it can be and how strong it can be. And all of the parts that you see in this photo are carbon fiber, including those blue things. But all the rest of the things, including the wheels, we were the first to do carbon fiber wheels. Uh, all these are carbon fiber. We also use titanium, aluminum, and uh, chrome moly steel. Now one thing that is very important to me and students as a driver is that we have two pedals, one for the accelerator and one for the brake. Because as you do maneuvers, you're going to be accelerating and braking, and sometimes you're going to be on both pedals at the same time for some special maneuvers. So I'll do anything to have two pedals at my feet. So to do this, we have a combined hand, clutch, and shifter. The two uh, handles pull together for the clutch, and the whole mechanism rotates for the uh, shifter. And this works out really well, and you'll see an example here in a minute. Now, one thing that we've developed this year, and it was written up in Race Car Engineering Magazine from England, and is going to be the feature of a uh, pl uh, daily planet from the Discovery Channel in Canada, actually on Monday, is this active aero. And what we have is aerodynamic wings that push the car to the ground. In an airplane, the wings lift the plane up and keep it in the air. We do the opposite. We push the car down because the more you can push down on the car, the faster you can go around turns. So we have set this up. The top three flaps on the car can open and close by computer control, and it's totally automatic. The, the, the driver doesn't have to do anything. Now, with all that downforce, you get drag, and drag limits your maximum speed. And so what we do is we open up all four wings, because we have uh, four quadrants here. We open up all four wings for acceleration, and then when we uh, start to make a turn, we close the inside two sets of wings, and then when we turn really fast, we close all four wings. And so this is our active aero suspension. It's quite an innovation. And thank you for demonstrating that for us. It's waving at you. <laughs> now next I'm going to show you an in-car video. Uh, and uh, this was out at Texas Motor Speedway, combination of a lot of slaloms, chicanes, and sweepers. And uh, so watch two th three things out of this. Number one, watch the driver shift the gears. Notice how quickly he can go through the gears. Watch uh, how smooth he is by driving, and also uh, watch how close he comes to these cones. Uh, let's talk about success stories of our students. A lot of our students really would like to go into motorsports, and a lot of them have. Uh, Steve Trinidad was chief engineer for Celine Motorsports uh, a few years ago. Now he owns his own racing company and been very successful. Craig Henry is now in charge of all racing engines in the United States for Honda. 
and very successful. Richard Pelletier uh, is working at BMW Design Group, and he comes back every year and says, every second I spent working on that car has been worth it for my professional career. I don't regret a second that I worked on the car. And uh, Joe Hayden uh, was a member of the BMW Sauber for, uh, Formula One team in Austria for a number of years working in the wind tunnel. Currently, we have Blake Hensley as a trackside engineer for Force India Formula One race car team, the highest form of racing in the world. And we have uh, Eric Likely is a race engineer working on Cadillacs and Corvettes uh, for a series. One of our current students, Jake Oberg, is uh, working as a trackside engineer even before he's graduated. Uh, now, not everybody goes into racing, and uh, most of our students are very, very successful in many other endeavors. Dr. Prince is a professor of mechanical engineering out at Cal State Northridge, and he's in charge of their Formula SAE program. And Dr. David Hun is the chief engineer and technical director for Lockheed Martin here in Grand Prairie. And if you'll notice, everything that the students learn in Formula SAE transfers to any industry. And so these guys, and I could go on and on all night about how many of our people have been successful, but a lot of our team members have risen to a very high level in uh, their companies. Now, let's talk about the significance of FSAE to engineering. We conduct our uh, team as a volunteer organization, and we have students ranging from freshmen all the way through graduate students uh, on the team. Now, some seniors and some graduate students could get course credit if they choose to do so, but most of them uh, do it as volunteer. UTA has just uh, instituted a uh, certificate in automotive engineering uh, to further enhance uh, the credentials of our uh, students. And the students spend about 6,000 man hours uh, designing, building a car, and learning to drive it and taking it to competition. Now, if you think about that, somebody spending 10, 20, 40, 60 hours a week for a year for free just because it's an interesting and challenging project I can't tell you how much that speaks of the quality of all the students that are on this program, and the recruiters know it. They're all after these guys. Let's talk a minute about uh, the student design competitions and what it means to the student and to the university. For the student, they get the opportunity to work in a group, work uh, on a budget, on a schedule. They get to work with other people, different personalities, make compromises of design. And, and they learn so much engineering that are things that we could never teach them in a classroom uh, because they are hands-on and they learn it themselves. They learn to be professional and they learn to interface with industry, our sponsors, our suppliers. And, and I have a, a story, you know, a student might turn in a homework and he gets it 85% correct and he walks away. But in Formula SAE, as fast as these cars are, there's no 85%. It better be 100%, and you better understand exactly why it's 100%, and don't stop until it is. And of course, recruiters love these guys. Now, to the university, this is a great uh, mode of engineering education. Uh, there, there can be no better education than a hands-on experience uh, with something like this. It also gives a lot of publicity and visibility and recognition for the university. Recruitment, we, we have the, the, um, the students come by for uh, outreach and, and uh, enrollment to the university twice a day. And we have somebody appointed to clean all the nose prints off of our showcase room because everybody is so fascinated by a race car. And the students work with sponsors and have interactions with industries to help them uh, raise their money and facilities for that. Now, I'd like to talk about the value of Formula SAE. It allows the students to develop technical skills through hands-on experience. And in my opinion, when you have to solve a problem of your own thinking, of your own doing, of your own imagination, you learn so much more than when you solve a problem from an assigned homework. 
And so hands-on involvement, hands-on experience, to me is totally in, invaluable. It's very uh, critical to uh, a deep understanding of engineering. These students develop professionalism, teamwork, uh, how to work on budgets and deadlines and work with other uh, students. And all of these are the exact skills industry wants you to learn. They may not care if you can do a triple integral, but they want you to do these things. And so this is very valuable to engineering or to industry. I'd like to just leave you with this one thought. My opinion is that a competition-based, uh, hands-on involvement of a project that is interesting and challenging is the ultimate form of education because you learn so much with a hands-on. And if I told my guys, look, let's just go build a car, let's, we'll drive it in our parking lot all by ourselves, nobody else will see it, they'd all go home. If I said, let's build a car, take it to a national or an international competition, and challenge yourself to pit yourself against the best in the world, they're all in. And, and uh, I think that's the value of competitions like this. Here's some of our cars that we've built, and I thank you very much for your attention. <laughs>